Hi you guys, this is Carmen and my pen name is Casey Wolf. I want to wish you all a happy Mama's Day. Today is Mother's Day so I hope you guys enjoyed your day and you had an awesome time with your family or your children and or children. And um, yes, so um, my pen name is Casey Wolf, but my real name is Carmen. The reason I decided to use a pen name is because I do a lot of metaphysical and spiritual things and I have a lot of, um, I had a channel really dedicated under my name, Carmen Scheid, that's my real name and a lot of metaphysical things and I have a lot of meditations that I sell and I also have um, a book on how to connect with your angels and children's books so I kind of wanted to keep that separate from my romance writing and so I decided to have a little fun with a name and I named myself Casey Wolf and um, my son kind of thinks it's kind of dumb because of wolf but a lot of people kind of use something like that when they use a pen name and I'm having fun I want to have fun writing so anyway in this video what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I'm structuring my novel and I'm also gonna read a little bit of my novel so that way you can kind of get a feel of to how I'm, I write and um, see if you can learn something from it or I can learn something from it you know that way you can kind of decide do I want to follow her do I like her style of writing um, and I'm going to show you how I've structured my novel and of course always recommend books uh, regarding writing your novel so one of the books that I highly do recommend and that I'm following to structuring the novel because I've tried to read books on structuring novel and I was like not really getting it and I really understood it when I bought, um, what's his name again? William Bernhardt's Story Structure, The Key to Successful Fiction. And I'll list the books below. And if you click on that, I'll get a small commission from Amazon and that'll really help me out. And I really appreciate it. Um, so I highly recommend that you buy story structure the key to successful fiction and after you're done reading that to get the creating character building your story to life and uh, oh bringing your story to life sorry and the third one is perfecting your plot charting the hero's journey and the last one is dynamic dialogue letting your story speak it's very important that you have dynamic dialogue and that you don't write everything properly you know because if you do that kind of makes your story kind of be dull so if you say Michael where are you oh no I am over here it kind of sounds like you know when you see movies like that give them a little attitude like the way I'm talking right now you know how you speak in real life you in real life you don't speak proper English all the time um, you you have your way of speaking so make sure you let your characters have their way of speaking it makes it interesting um, so let's go ahead and get started right so the first thing I'm doing is I bought some note cards he recommends that you buy note cards um, a bunch of them uh, I know I have Scribner for those of you um, who might not know what Scrivener is but I'm pretty sure you've heard of it uh, it's a program that you buy it's it reminds me of the old DOS programs <laughs> that's what it reminds me of or let's say the old version of Microsoft Word uh, that's what it kind of reminds me of um, more like a DOS um, anyway so on there he recommends that you buy note cards because you're going to plot your story in scenes. And I found these cool note cards at Walmart. They, uh, they come in a pack of four different colors. So there's a hundred in each color is 25. And I went ahead and I bought three because you're going to divide the, the colors if you want to. So you can get just white if you'd like and then mark them with a marker like this is 25 and then go with a certain marker here and just draw a line and then the second one different color marker and then the third one a different color marker if you want but I thought this was pretty cool so on the first one you have 15 cards that's your first act 
the second one you have 30 cards that's your second act and the last one you have uh, 15 cards that's your third act so that's 60 cards if you need more cards by all means you can use more cards don't make it think don't think that it, it's set and done so that way you have at least 60 scenes so what he says is on the first what you do is when you get started in structuring your novel what he says to do and i wrote a lot of notes so in the first one you have to establish um the in so first of all you have to determine what the inciting incident is make sure he says that your incident your inciting incident is written like on the 20th page if you want to don't go don't be don't be on page 50 and still not write what the inciting incident is okay so let's say um, I'm gonna use this as an inciting incident and I'm using Rob Parnell's book in the hero's journey um, I highly recommend that one too um, on the first one he says let's say you are an accountant and you're really bored your job's boring like I used to work at a bank it was boring and um, I'm bored and all of a sudden my dad gets really sick and I have to go visit him in Mexico so there my normal world is getting knocked out from reality because I have to go let's say I've never been to Mexico so now like my life is being thrown for a loop so that's an inciting incident and so let's say um, my dad gets sick and it turns out and he passes away right and um, and my dad uh, the doctor comes through and then he says guess what Miss Shide Casey Wolf in this instinct you know um, two weeks later I go back and I'm like oh my dad died oh my world's changed and two, uh, they call me back and they do an autopsy right because the autopsy report is back and they're like your dad was poisoned and I'm like oh, I'm gonna find out who killed my dad so there's like your first uh, you have your first um, what is it called your first act my inciting incident is my father got sick I went to Mexico and then they let me know my dad got killed he w he didn't die naturally someone poisoned poisoned him so now I'm headed off my on to my hero's journey right I'm going and that's where I, I make the decision and that decision is gonna now lead me to act two so he recommends that you write these 15 first right then we're gonna know he says don't write act two he says write act three because most writers know how their story is going to begin and they know how their story is going to end so he recommends that you go to the end if you know how it's going to end write it write the ending and then um, you can go taking steps back now what I did, I kind of knew how my story was going to go. So I just went ahead and went from act one to act two to act three. Now on act three though, he says, make sure you make the, you make it bad for your, make sure that when you're making it bad for your character, that each time it just keeps getting worse and getting worse and getting worse. Don't make it worse. And then the other incidents that happen aren't as severe as something you put in the middle because then the people are like oh well why didn't it end in the middle where everything was so gruesome in the middle and now the last act is kind of boring because those challenges or the the conflicts and everything they're going through the struggles aren't as severe as what hit in the middle so make sure that on the third act you know that's where towards the third act is where um, it's it gets really bad and then just make it keep getting worse and worse and worse and worse okay so um let me go ahead and read to you what he says to do that way um you know what i'm talking about okay so it says after the inciting incident so the thing you know like for me oh no your dad's sick you got to go to mexico okay establish the beginnings of the central conflict and what's going to be in it so I have to go over there I might not want to go over there maybe I d 
didn't connect with my father. Maybe my father was never there for me. Do you know what I mean? Something like that. And so I have to go over there. And what events need to occur to get the reader from the inciting incident to the first major plot point? So what needs to happen between the incident where I have to go to Mexico and from the time that they tell me my father was poisoned? What events need to happen between there and there? Write them down. Okay, if you have any uh, subplots, make sure that your subplots are complementary to your story, that they all have the same goal. And my son was watching a video on YouTube on how to write and uh, regarding subplots and they used Lord of the Rings and that really helped me. I don't know who this guy is. If not, I would give him a shout out. Um, but he did a video on writing and on there it was talking about subplots and so because i really couldn't understand it i was like well what's a subplot and i'm reading and reading not understanding and my son when he showed me the video it just clicked for me a subplot let's say so you have frodo you have the elves you have um who else do you have god it's been a long time since i watched it i think you have the dwarves um you have a lot of characters right they they're subplots there's a reason um why they want the ring destroyed and what the conflicts going on between them right and at the end of the day they all want the same thing they all want the ring destroyed and uh the evilness that holds that ring kind of affected them a certain way so that's the subplots right they all kind of want like their own little revenge or their own um their own reason and their uh for destroying the ring and things are going on between them right do you remember um when that guy and i do apologize it's been a long time since i've watched lord of the rings i want to say striker if that's his name where he's going through things remember they're trying to get him they're following him and um so he's going through certain things and the elves and so anyway at the end of the day they, they all want the same goal right so you want to make sure that if you have subplots they all want the same goal here it's to destroy the ring and then uh so these are questions your reader might uh need answered for your first um act so make sure that you answer who your lead character is uh, what is their desire? Uh, perhaps ignited by the inciting incident. A lot of desires are ignited by the inciting incident. Do you remember if you've just watched Aquaman where the bad guy is with his, their pirates and him and his dad? And um, so one inciting incident, incident for the bad guy is Aquaman allows his father to die. So what's going to happen now? He wants revenge on Aquaman. He wants to kill Aquaman, you know, so that's maybe, you know, um, letting you know what someone's desire is and being brought up, ignited by the inciting incident. So what type of story are you writing? Are you writing a romance novel, uh, paranormal? Uh, you're writing a crime novel, you know, whatever novel you're writing. So make sure that you answer that within your first act um, what is the plan in overcoming the problem so what is your plan in overcoming the problem and who is the antagonist make sure you write you let them know that who the antagonist is um, then remember he told you to write that first and then go to act three so what is going to be a turning point from act two to act Three. that's the climax what's gonna be you know like in Avengers when they're actually fighting right and all this stuff so when uh, what's his name finds them and they all start fighting at the war so what is the big changing point so make sure that you do do the roller close co coaster to the climax right 
because you can't just give too much action, action, action. There's got to be a little bit of rest and then action and rest and make sure each time it just goes up higher and higher and higher because you can't be like in the middle of the book and then give it a climax really, 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 really high. And then at the end, towards the end of the book, just little climaxes. That's not going to work for the readers. It's just going to be boring. Um, they're going to ask, why didn't you just stop the, the book right at that? point where the highest climax was because after that you're like what's the point <laughs> right anyway so climax and uh, climax consumes more than one scene cutting back and forth between dif different scenes of events to heighten up the drama so play it to the max so he wants you to play it to the max make sure they go through horrible make it horrible and desperate and seemingly hopeless as possible as you can will anything occur after the climax you'll need one or two scenes at the end of your story to have a resolution this is at the end where the climax right and they beat the bad guy and now you want to see how the lives of your characters are after this so you want to give them a little glimpse of that never forget to do that so the act three checklist he has here for you is the moment of the self revelation when the protagonist and the reader realize the character has changed you have to make sure your character changes either in a negative or a positive way it's almost like real life that's what happens in real life uh, the final confrontation the resolution of the conflict beginning of the new life and the resolution of the characters related to the subplots right because remember if you have a subplot what's the resolution for those other characters too and let's see what he says for act two write your character's turning point and put it in the middle now you need 14 scenes before so when you, you remember you have 30 cards in the um in the second act so on card number 15 with act two you need to write your character's turning point and put it in the middle this is the point where he's going to go balls to the wall and there's no turning back where he decides this is where i'm going to do it this is where i'm going to do what i need to do and his old life is gone the, his old way of thinking is gone this is the part where he's changing where he's changed and he's actually making a commitment to do something so that's card number 14 15 so w what you need to do is what are the incidents that happened before there you go backwards what are the incidents that led you there and then on the other 14 that are left going forward what are the incidents that are going to happen after that that are going to lead you to act three so uh, you pull your threads from Act 1 into Act 2. Characters in Act 1 continue to Act 2. The protagonist's agenda should continue to Act 2. Conflicts should get more complicated. What was grim before should become absolutely bleak now. So now it's like, oh my god, it seems like it's impossible. What was difficult must become now at this point impossible if you haven't introduced the antagonist now is the time to introduce your antagonist in act two if you ha if you didn't do it in act one if you haven't in okay so i read that all characters must be introduced before the midpoint so so make sure you pull all plot threads forward make sure all main characters have something to do Characters continue to advance to main quest. Make sure central problem becomes worse. So that's what you do when you're plotting your novel. Do I have anything? So he says to ask this. Have I planted everything that needs to be planned to make the climax and the dunonomy du play off the way I want it to play off? Says something for knowledge to the reader that do, uh, doesn't know they are getting. So, so what you can do, what he's recommending here is like in act one, I'm hanging, and this is what, what he says, let's say in act one, 
I'm with my character and they're like, hey, Lacey, that's the, my character's name anyway. Hey, Lacey, um, here's a knife. What do I need a knife for? A pocket knife? Oh, you never know when you might need it. Oh, my God. And come on, carry it for, you know, it's just a gift. Or, or actually, you don't even have to make a big scene like, oh, mm, you gave me a knife for my birthday, a pocket knife. All right, thank you put it in your pocket and then like towards the end that pocket knife is going to be crucial so he says to put little things like that within the story i really like that so make sure that you put and then what you do is you put your cards in order so once you're done writing all your scenes what you need to do is you lay them out and you can put them in order you can move them around if you want and then you can do an outline so you can print out an outline and then you can put it on your Scrivener if you use Scrivener. So I really like that. And I also have another one that is called, that my daughter bought me. It is, um, it also deals with writing and it is called, I think it's called Structure Your Novel, to be honest. But I actually found his better. Uh, but she loves structure your novel she really likes that and I found so you can tell that I do use it I have my and I'll list this below uh, character it's a character sheet and it's like five pages and I really like it and um, you can do your main characters and write down their information on here and it's very thorough now with my daughter the one about um, the structure in your novel, you can do that. It, the program, it lets you choose a song for each character or songs, and you can even do a picture so that way you know exactly what they look like. I know you have a descriptive, but if you want to do a picture that way you remember, because you don't want to give them blue eyes in one chapter and then they have brown eyes by the end of the chapter, you know? So you make sure that you have that, and it would be cool, right? That, or you could just have like a picture of them really big, so that way you always remember. That's what I'm gonna have to do, like a picture with like little quirks that they have. So this is an idea, this is for me. I just thought about this, so do a picture, or you can draw one yourself or find someone online just picture and put it on there and then on the bottom what you can go ahead and do is you can write down like little phrases that they have and little quirks like they might like to do this all the time or they cock an eyebrow or they do something just little quirks so that way you know and you remember and it's really quick for you at a glance that's the suggestion I have and so I, I cannot say enough about this book and I do use it it's really dirty now it's Thinking like a romance novel, the central writer source book of the wor words and phrases. But you know what? It doesn't even have to be with romance. It can help you a lot just with writing a normal book. Um, the source also helps a lot. So let's say, you know, I want to, <laughs> the one it opened to was the penis, descriptive words. So let's say words and phrases to describe the abdomen, right? So I want to say an adjective. So um, his bronzed abs, his chiseled bronze abs, like you can say something to that effect. Um, verbs, um, things that, uh, okay, things the abdomen and stomach can do, burned with emotion, like, oh, I saw him. You know what I mean, right? Like, oh. My stomach was burning with emotion when I saw him. Um, I love being dramatic, okay? And uh, oh, it curled. Um, it was sensitive. Um, it lurched. Uh, it was nauseous. It bubbled in nausea. Uh, so things like that. And then things that can be done to an abdomen. Um, hand moved up and down hands slid up and down i raked my hands slowly up his abdomen feeling the uh, indentations of the muscle deep within you know what i mean feeling the grain of the muscle in his abs and i just love having fun okay my it's because my sister and i when we were little <laughs> this is funny this is what we used to do we were so bored we used to get the comic books in the newspaper in the Spanish newspapers, they're kind of like naughty. Um, so they have this, na na the, the comic books, right? And you know, when we were kids, my grandma would let us have the novelas, but they were like comic and they were, they were like really raunchy and she would have us read them. Like, but they weren't like, 
like they weren't showing the girls were just like voluptuous and the men were strong and they had a big booty that's what i'm talking about and it would be like she's like uh, and she's bending over like uh so anyway but she would let us read them i guess anything to entertain us and but they were funny the the comics were funny and so my sister and i used to like to read to each other and, and you know like oh my god <laughs> we would do that so i guess inside of me i still kind of do that so anyway so there's that one and i bought this one too uh so it's the romance writer's phrase book the essential source book for every romantic novelist contains over 3,000 descriptive tags arranged for quick easy reference guaranteed to stimulate the imagination by jen kent and candace shelton so let's see, let me just um, read a little bit. Like here it says, uh, for the eyes. His black eyes impaled her. See, his eyes blazed down into hers. It's actually pretty good. Um, her eyes widened in alarm. Her eyes narrowed suspiciously. This is actually pretty good. Let's see, here is the emotions. She gazed at him in despair. A suffocating sensation tightened her throat. His expression was like someone who had been struck in the face. Ooh. Sex. Carried away by her own response, she failed to notice. She could feel the sexual magnetism that made him so self-confident. She felt curious swooping up at her innards. He struck a vibrant chord in her. She tried to deny the pulsing knot that had formed in her stomach. So these are actually pretty good for you to go and read. So here it is, and I'm gonna list it down below along with the romance writer. The other one, that I'm using right now. So it is the Emotional Wound Thesaurus. I highly recommend this and I have a little paper in there because in mine, my character, it's experiencing the death of a parent as a child. So here it lets you know, so a parent dying from illness or an accident or another cause is especially difficult when one is a child or a young adult. So it gives you like a little bit of notes. Then it says basic needs often compromised by this wound, safety and security, love and belonging. So you might have, your character might have those uh, needs often confronted where they might not feel um, a belonging or love or some kind of safety. I'm very spiritual. So to me that goes, that deals with the root chakra and the heart chakra. So it says false beliefs that could be embraced. So people die when you need them the most. I won't be, I won't be a good mother. Uh, I'm too busy to think. I won't, if I'm too busy to, fee, to think, I won't feel. So these are, so it's giving you like information what kind of, um, I guess, how your character will be so that way you know what kind of personality your character will have and i really like it and then uh, the character may feel losing a loved one they may feel uh, fear being abandoned or rejected being responsible for others and failing them uh, possible responses and results so regressing to an earlier age if still as a child uh, anxiety and depression, panic attacks, growing so, uh, superstitious when it comes to death or keeping loved ones safe, personality traits that may form, attributes, they might be very affectionate, appreciative and nurturing, flaws, they might have addictive personalities, compulsive, dishonest, triggers that m might aggravate this wound, the date of the parent's death, uh, attending funerals, uh, looking at pictures, opportunities to face or overcome with this wound, losing a second parent, a living parent growing ill, um, 
so you see it's got a lot of information yep it even has growing up in a cult it has a lot of good reference information i have it on kindle and i have it here um it's it's i highly recommend this because it's gonna let you understand your character especially if your character went through something that way it makes your character more believable and um when i saw this i went back and i changed some things it really helped me as far as writing my book so i'm listing this and now it's time for me to read to you a little bit of my book so let me tell you a little bit of my book my little book is uh, my little book my book is about werewolves and it deals with her mother getting killed and her mother got haunted uh, hunted uh, by some a werewolf hunter and um, so she got killed and her aunt which isn't really her aunt it was her mom's best friend she took her in and she's raised her and now she's a teenager and she's afraid of loving because as the book says she's afraid of losing are people gonna want her especially if she's a wolf the beast the reason her mother was killed is because she was a werewolf so therefore she kind of like this beast that i am is why my mother is is dead no one's ever gonna love me because of this no one's ever gonna want me because of this because in in the book uh, when the guy's killing her he's like you're a beast who's gonna want a beast you know so I'm gonna read to you a little bit about my or a little bit of my novel and I hope you like it I also use this book as I told you I'm very spiritual and I do deal with like crystals and herbs and essential oils and uh, I do metaphysical things and um, I have this book and this book is called Cunningham's Encyclopedia of magical herbs because in there they do herbs they do like um, shamanism in Spanish is called curandera so they they do things like that and I want to make sure that uh, I list some of the things in here that go with it with uh, the book so I recommend this if you're writing a book about like spiritualism or a book about herbs maybe magical books or someone who's into herbalism uh, this is a good book to to have for example uh, let's say Lily here it says it's a uh, feminine planet moon element water deities is Venus Juno Nephthys Quan Yin powers protection breaking a love spell magical uses plant lilies in the garden to keep away ghosts and evil protect against the evil eye and to keep unwanted visitors from your home lilies are also good antidotes to love spells for this purpose a fresh lily should be worn or carried this breaks love spells which have been cast invoking a specific person i'll let you know <laughs> I grew up in a, uh, I grew up like half in Mexico and half in the United States. I saw a lot of people doing love spells on people and I always thought it was the most ridiculous thing ever. Um, but there are, there's people that do say, you know, I, I don't believe in taking away someone's free will. If they're gonna fall in love with you, they're gonna fall in love with you. If you're forcing them to love you with a spell, Carmen's gonna get you that's all I gotta say so anyway if you know anybody who may have or you think someone put a love spell on you here you go this breaks a love spell which may have been um, cast upon you so wear a lily or plant lilies around you to bring clues in solving a crime committed in the past year bury an old piece of leather in the beds of lilies wow the first white lily of the season will bring strength to him or her who finds it there's a lot of white lilies down uh it's it used to be a house and i live in a town now that if you have a home and you're not fixing it the city will come and condemn it and tear it down and that's what they did to an old home they, they've been tearing down houses um 
So in my book, so let's say I want to write about their witches and they want to do an herb. You can use this as a reference, right? And so you're like, oh, they, I want them to do a spell. And then you can even come with like a little, you can do a, a you know how they chant and they do like a little poem and, and you can do something like that. So if you're writing books about that kind of stuff, this is a good book to write. And I also use it. I actually use it in real life. I don't do it to do magical spells like that. What I do it is to uh, clear your energy, uh, to help you connect with higher self, the higher source, God, your angels. That's what I use mine for. And to enhance your intuition, your creativity. I use it for that kind of stuff, not other stuff like that. But um, you're welcome. I'll list it be below. A lot, it has a lot of great reviews. Um, unfortunately, the guy passed away from AIDS. Um, but this is a, a good book. And it's an old one, by the way. So let me go ahead and read to you a little bit about my book so that way you kind of know how I write. And so I'm kind of um, wondering what part I should read to you. And I do apologize. I only see with one eye. Both my eyes work, but... I only see out of one eye. So when I'm seeing from this side, this eye is not seeing. And when I'm seeing from this side, this eye is not seeing. It's like a pendulum. It goes like this. So sometimes things are constantly moving back and forth for me. That's why a lot of times I either skip words or I think it's going to say something and because it's kind of like moving over to the next word and I think it combines to make a different word. I don't know if I'm going to be able to drive. I'm, I'm being honest with you. I went to the eye doctor, uh, not the eye doctor. I went to go get my driver's license renewed. And I had to look into the, the little uh, machine, right? And in there, they give you like three little tabs to look at. It looked like <laughs> if she only knew what I was seeing, uh, she probably would have not let me <laughs> get my driver's license. Um, so they make you look in and in there, it had three squares like this. It had three squares like this. And she told me, see the squares. And the squares are there. And, and so each, each one is supposed to have a letter, right? So I'm going to do it twice. I can tell you how I saw. So that's why when you see me having a little hard time reading, it's because of what's going on with my eyes. So I'm going to show you what I, ha what I saw. So L M. Q2, L, M, Q2. So what I did is uh, I saw this T, Z, A, R. So when I put my eyes in the little thing, I saw this. It was like flickering. It was like turning on and off. But I could clearly see this. But this one was flickering on and off, flickering on and off, flickering on and off. And I'm like, I have to close my left eye to make sure. So I went ahead and I closed. Well, here, if I'm looking this way, it would be my right eye. Let me close my right eye. So all I saw was this. And um, then I was able to see it. Right? And, and so I said, okay, that's what it is. And she's like, um, that's all you see? And I'm like, oh, um, I'm sorry. I said, let me, let me go back. And then when I, so then that's all I was seeing. So I had to cover my other eye so I could finally see this part. So that's what happens to me a lot. Uh, so I do apologize when I'm reading. That's what happens to me. <laughs> so when I get my audible and I'm going to do my audible, someone's going to have to read it for me. Uh, Cause I thought about doing myself doing the audible myself but i'm like oh no so let me see do you want me to read to, to you uh i'm gonna read to you my first chapter would you like to do that would you like that i'll do that bang 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 come out little piggy come out a cynical voice called out run to the hole mom demanded heaving as she turned her head back to the door I don't want a mama, not without you. My mouth quivered with the rhythm of my pounding heart. Go, call Diana. She'll know where to get you. Go. She handed me the phone, her eyes filled with intensity. Mama will come and get you. 
Promise. She closed the makeshift floor vent. This was the hiding place she had made for me to keep me safe from them. My tiny five-year-old body was the only one small enough to fit through it. Just then, the door swung open with a kick. Three men appeared through the opening in the vent. The man in the front nodded, tipping his cowboy hat while holding a newspaper with his other hand. His blue plaid shirt drenched with his musky, rank, sweaty odor. His camel leather vest not only matched the color of his hair and skin, it matched the texture. His jeans were torn and stained with oil. His teeth covered with the brown tobacco he chewed. You think you could just come into my home and barge like this in the middle of the night? The hell you want! Didn't think I'd find ya, little bitch, he announced, parading through the doorway, throwing a newspaper at her. Keeping her gaze at the man, she squatted down and picked it up. She laughed. Aw, you still believe in fairy tales? See here, missy, some folks think these things ain't real. He lolled his head. I, on the other hand, do. He casually put his dirty boot on the coffee table and bent to rest his elbow on his thigh. Uh-oh, you don't put your feet on the table. You've kept me busy, away from my boy. Idaho, Kentucky, and now El Paso? What you want? Standing firm, she impaled him with her eyes and threw the paper at him. The hair in my arm stood as the scent of her anger slapped my nostrils. My ears twitched with the loud thumping in her chest. You don't think I know what you are? You may be a pretty senorita, but you reek of dog. He walked towards her, raking her up and down with his eyes, taking a whiff of her. How these ugly beasts reproduce is beyond me. If I could sear him with my eyes, he would burn. My mama isn't, is not a beast, and she doesn't smell, I huffed. His pungent stench stung my nose. One of the men stood pointing a pistol at her, and the other stood outside with a rifle keeping watch. The man in the vest pulled out a gun, and with the other grabbed mama by the chin, pointing the gun against it. She turned her head down towards the vent, immediately anchoring her eyes at me. It's such a shame you're a mutt. Well, after all, you beasts are only good for one thing. I reckon we have a little fun with her before we kill her. He spit his tobacco, leaving a brown slimy trail on the corner of his mouth. Pushing his face against her, he pressed his lips, rubbing and smearing her face. He whispered, you know what I do with things like you? He graced his leather vest with the tip of his gun, grinning. Mama mouth, run, as her eyes turned amber, letting out a growl. She's turning, the man pointing the gun shouted. Bang! Thump! She dropped to the floor right above me, her eyes still locked with mine, fading from amber to black. Tears began to fall like waterfalls. I placed my hands over my mouth. Please don't hear me, as my heart fluttered up my throat. Coldness touched my head as her blood drizzled on my forehead. Whistling and pulling a knife from his pocket, the man in the vest sat down nonchalantly rolling up his sleeve and slid his forearm. 29. One more and I get a free set of steak knives, he sneered and continued whistling. Skin us a? Nah, she's too damn thin. Won't even make a vest for a young'un. Go get me my Cuban. He stood up, striding to the kitchen. What do we have here? He inspected a bottle. No warm? Ah, and took a drink. He kept whistling, grabbing a kitchen towel and stuffing it in the bottle. Where's my damn Cuban, Jose? The short, stubby man from outside walked in hastily towards him, wiping sweat from his forehead while huffing and puffing. 
He pulled out the brown cigar. Here you go, jefe. Light it up for ya. Give me that. I'll do it my damn self. He lit up the cigar and the bottle. Taking a drag, he flung his head. Get outside. He walked back to the living room. The world is better off without vermin like you. Such a damn shame, senorita. Oh well. As he walked out, he tossed the bottle on the sofa, quickly engulfing it into flames. Let's go, boys! He clapped his hands, letting out a calling whistle. Andres! I have to get out of here. I peeked through the trailer skirt. They repeatedly rubbed the truck's engine, leaving a dust storm. Even the loud music couldn't drown their hollering. Heat stung my whole body, my chest compressed. Coughing, I kicked a portion of the trailer skirt with all my might and quickly made my way up Franklin Mountain through the route Mom repeatedly showed me leading to the hole. All I can think about was Mama. I want it, Mama. I sobbed repeatedly, replaying the night, wishing I could have done something. I touched the blood on my forehead. The cool air and the moon had managed to bake it. I soaked my fingers with saliva, running them over my forehead and sniffed them. This was now the only way I could sense and touch my mama. These men had beaten, pounded, and shredded my heart. I wailed, Mama, please, Mama, come back. I need you, Mama. Call Diana. Oh, yeah, Tia. This was her internal thinking. I pulled the wedged flip phone from my waistband, dialed the number with my bloody fingers. This is Diana. You know what to do. Tia, this is Lacey. I'm in the hole. I began sobbing uncontrollably, fighting blows to my gut and throat. They killed Mama. Please, Tia, please come and get me. I held tight to the phone as I made my way into the hole. The wool blankets, water bottles, and MREs were still here. I wrapped the blanket around me as I squatted down gazing at the stars for what seemed to be hours. It was as though they were entertaining me, dancing and blinking back and forth. Are you talking to me? Did you see what they did? Just then I saw one radiating intensely as though she was answering. The other shimmered rhythmically. Why didn't, why didn't I do something? Stupid, stupid, I banged my head with the palm of my hand. What are you trying to tell me? I could almost hear them singing. Weeping, I took the back of my hand, wiping tears as I laid my head on the ground. I rubbed my fingers, inhaling my mother's scent. Sorry, Mama. My tears created puddles in the dirt. Comforting myself, I sang their lullaby. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. And that's how that chapter ends. I know you're not supposed to write. If you notice, I highly recommend reading um, S.A. Souls. I know they say Sully, but I had a student and that was his last name and it was Sewell. So um, she recommends not to write, I felt, I saw, I heard, uh, your five senses, what I tasted, uh, I knew. Um, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, so, but you can to make, uh, sometimes you can to make the sentence run smoothly so i did put on here i saw somewhere i squatted down gazing at the stars for what seemed to be hours it was though as they were singing at me i saw one radiating i can remove that i could put as i um how can i do it because i went back and i took all those things off and there's one there right there so i could put one radiated intensely as though she was answering 
so I can do that. So that's how you can remove those things because I went back and I looked for, I felt, I saw, but you can leave some there sometimes if you want to. It's not a big deal. Uh, but for you to write in a deeper point of view, you're supposed to do that. So I hope you liked my story and you kind of get a sense of what's going. The reason I'm putting the thing about the stars is because later on the story, that's what she feels is a connection to her, the stars. The stars are a connection to her mother. They remind her of her mother, remember? Uh, one of the things on the emotion of the source, certain things take you there. So for her, it's a, it's a trigger, but it's not a bad trigger. It's a memory of her mother. And I'm going to bring that story, the stars, later on several times. Because uh, it reminds me, the reason I put that is because when my cousin passed away, he was one. And when he passed away, and he, uh, my other little cousin, he was four, he didn't understand. So... They told him that he was in the sky, so for him, the moon represented him. And it kind of reminded me of that, so I included that in there. I hope you like so far what I've written, that way you can kind of have a gist as to what I'm doing and how I'm writing, and uh, hopefully you'll share, like, and subscribe if you would like, and um, I'm going to keep showing like, little things like this, but... I wanted you to know a little bit of how I write and um, I know I'm a romance writer but yes there's going to be kisses and she's going to be touching and I'm going to be showing what she's feeling the sensation and everything um, I don't think I'm going to include a sex scene and if I do it's going to be more like um, Diana Goldovan writes where it's not going into detail it's just like oh we're getting there and then it's uh, done D does that make sense um, because I want it to be like young adults and it be clean, uh, as clean as I can. Um, as I mentioned before, and I've listed the books that I highly recommend. I've been reading like crazy. I'm gonna, my husband's a truck driver and I'm gonna go with him for a couple weeks, but I'm gonna be writing as I go. So hopefully I'll be able to upload videos. Uh, I have been, sorry, I hadn't uploaded in, in a little bit. I've been, doing quite a bit because I run this channel and I run my angel channel and uh, I've been reading basically I've been reading a lot uh, let me show you how many books I have so you can uh, know so this is like a little book this is what Scribner does to your let me show you how Scribner looks right away so this is what Scribner does see it looks like an old DOS or the notes on there and uh, you can set the chapters here that have like the flea market dusk. Um, I also have like, it's not just like sad, my book. Let me see here. Um, the stars. You see, I even named one. So let, let, let me show you. And it does deal with, because she's like a, a healer. And so this is the uncle. How many crates of tomatoes you got there, princess? Two. One with flowers and one without to ward off evil spirits. I wiggled my fingers in the air. Ooh, I have a question, Theo. Shoot, so why are you still here? I rose up chuckling, dusting the garden soil off my knees. Oh, you want to see evil, eh? He placed his hands on his head, making horns with his fingers, and began snarling. Shortly, he began wiping sweat from his forehead with a red uh, handkerchief, raising his cap to wipe the excess, then stuffed it uh, in his back pocket. The summer's heat had showered him with humidity. Damn it, it's 8 p.m. and I'm sweating like a pig, only in Texas. This manure smells a hell of a lot better than I do. He wasn't lying. He raised his arm, wiping his forehead with his sleeve, and took a whiff of his pit. Hoo-wee! He leaned, leaned, looking over at old Blue's bed. Tommy will be right over to unload her. I'm going home and take a shower. Please do, I pinched my nose. So anyway, so you see, it's got like a little bit of funny writing in here. Because uh, then one, she kind of like, she just turns into a wolf and her senses are heightened. So I have it to where like her senses heighten uh, right after she turns and they kind of like start going 
getting weaker before she um, she turns. Does that make any sense? I'll show you. Look what she does. This is kind of fun. Oh, I began stretch. So this is after she she turned. I began stretching and yawning. My body bustled and savored the energy, strength, and vitality that rushed through me. After every turn, my senses amplified and then dwindled down to the next full moon. My arms enjoyed the silky plushness of the red robe while sliding on, its warmth kissing my body as I zipped it. I hated how alive I felt after turning. I wanted no part of this thing. Always invading my brain thinking for me for a few days, making me hungry to be the animal I truly was. One day, I'll be able to shift when I want, won't have to hide, go into a bunker, holes or whatever. What? I pounded my head with the palm of my hand. See how she did this when she was young? I'm doing it again. I just want to find someone like me, someone to teach me whatever it is to be me. But no, did you hear yourself? Nothing good ever comes from being a beast. I'll always be locked up in this bunker. So anyway, so she's, Tommy's the guy. So in here she's like, let me see. So he said, look, I made my way out of the hole with a smile on my face. The first thing to catch my eyes was our trailer. Its blues and rusty browns resembled a turquoise stone, which made me appreciate its beauty. The sun highlighting the mist in the garden, its dirt perfumed with its rich minerals. I filled my chest with its succulence, enjoying my heightened awareness, hearing the birds singing in Tommy's Jeep. Oh, your bestie's here, Tia shook her head, grinning. I'll be in the house. So she was there the night before she was going to turn, and she had to make this excuse that she got sick. So look, jumping out of his jeep, he bopped his head to the rhythm of the music coming from his phone. If you could, you would moonwalk your way over here. Instead, he glided his feet to the groove, smirking his way towards me. And like the gentleman he wanted to be, he grabbed my hand and turned me slowly. His energy was infectious. There is only one you, Tommy, I nodded, smiling. Out of his pocket, he pulled out a green box. I brought some peppermint tea since I know you don't grow any. I read online it's good for an upset stomach. It's organic, he raised an eyebrow curling his lip. I reached over, grabbing it. You're so good to me, Tommy. The best friend any girl could ever have. Standing on my tiptoes, I wrapped my arms around his six-foot-four frame. He coiled my waist with his arms softly resting his chin on my shoulder. A waft of sage, rosemary, lavender, and geranium cologne invigorated sensations through my nose and body, causing me to turn my head towards his, delicately raking my nose over his cheek. My eyes were met with his tender hazel gray eyes and half-curled, curved sensuous lips. If that's what I get for one box, I'll bring a hundred tomorrow. What? What? Oh, my God. Tell me. I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. Damn you. I'm still in super hyper mode. Don't stop. I like it. He gave me a dreamy smile, caressing me with his eyes. The aroma of his excitement awakened a burning inside of me. What the hell is going on with me? Get it together. So you see, anyway, but when you do that, you can do it as a PDF or the book. I really like the way the book looks, so you can read it like that, see? So I was letting you know into uh, Tommy. So she lists herbs because her aunt knows how to heal with herbs. So, and as you can see, she's having problems with her be herself being a beast because of kind of like what it killed her mom and kind of what she heard the guy say. And even though we know things like that aren't real, in reality, they do affect us uh, in a psychological way where someone's constantly telling you things. And um, 
even though the, you know they're BSing you, you, it still kind of plays in your back. So this is a uh, story structure, The Keys to Successful fi fi um, Fiction by William Bernhardt. I highly recommend his books. He's really good. He's a best-selling author. And The Emotions, the books that I buy here, those are it, all of them. All of the Emotional Thesaurus uh, by Angela Ackerman. And I have listed those before. This is the one I do for the romance writing, but any, you, it, it's more than just romance writing. Uh, and I have romance books that I'm reading. Um, some of them are okay, I guess. This is, I guess, if you like S&M, because that's what it's turning out to be, and I'm not really a fan of that. Um, but I'm still reading it anyway to kind of learn. Uh, it's her, the writer's guide to emotion, character expression, all that. She's the one that tells you not to say, I smelled, I, I felt, I, you know, because if you say that, that kind of takes your reader out. So, um, as I said, I give you my body. That's a really good one. I highly recommend that you read her uh, Outlander book by her, uh, The Hero's Journey. I really recommend that by Rob Parnell. And, but I do have a lot of uh, books on writing. Mm -hmm. But I'm very happy. See, here are all the um, emotional thesaurus that I just... Here we go. So I have all the emotional thesaurus. So I, I really recommend these. And as I said, I, I recommend um, S.A. Sewell's uh, books on uh, the Writer's Guide to Plotting a Novel, The Writer's Guide to Character Emotion, The Writer's Guide to Character Expression. Excuse me, I haven't done her writing a, a novel. I apologize. Um, I was just reading them. Not that one. I, I've read the other ones. Um, the, for plotting my novel, I actually use Story Structure by um, William Bernhardt. And for emotions, to describe those emotions that I was using, I use the emotional thesaurus along with the romance writer. That one. That's what I'm using. And the tips given by the writer's guide to emotion and to expression by her. And um, yeah, so I'm also going off a lot by what I remember when I read the outliner. Outlander. Outlander. I noticed some, you know, the older I'm getting, it's like my mouth and my brain aren't cooperating. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give me a thumbs up, um, share, like, and subscribe, and let me know what you think. If you like my story, you know. So, uh, yeah, you guys, thank you so much. You guys take care and have a blessed one. Bye. See you on my next video.